difference in the way you communicate with people when you do that meditation? Do you notice a difference in the way people respond to you? Nice. What was the difference, John? And Roke, both of you. Igor, anybody that had a difference this week in the way people responded to them when they were doing the heart stuff? Deep sadness. You can still connect with people through deep sadness. It's very easy to connect with people through sadness because everybody's experienced it as long as you're not a victim. But how did the people, how did your connections with people change? I get what you felt, but I'm wanting to know how the people responded to you. Yeah, people are more playful with me. Perfect. Awesome. More open. People are very talkative and friendly. Nice. So you're seeing it has an effect on people. Had multiple women actually approach me. Nice. More connect. So who is now listening to this that listened last week, didn't do the meditation at all, and is wishing they had? I met some girl online and some things are crazy despite my moods. Yep. Because people really want to feel other people. They're not wanting you to be perfect. They're not wanting you to be this perfect guy that can do anything. They're wanting to know they can feel you, relate to you, connect to your emotions. And you're not a victim to your emotions. You can handle your emotions. And that's where it really comes from. Um, I'm not perfect. I have all kinds of emotional swings and uh, I'm not enlightened or anything like that. I, but my life only gets better and better and better every year as I process more emotions and I feel better. I get more powerful. I get bigger, but I still have my, my, I still have my, my moods and I keep going through them and I keep using and releasing to get to the next level and my life gets better. Um, Okay, awesome. So really good, guys. I'm glad it's helping you. Um, what I wanted this week to be about, we talked about last week was um, about 10 minutes to, you know, having charisma. I can't remember the exact title. And this week, we're going to talk about confidence. Same idea, 10 minutes to confidence. We're going to be doing a meditation this week on confidence. What does that feel like? What does that look like? What causes it? Um, and I want you to understand that I approach things differently. Excuse me. There we go. I approach things differently than most people. I approach things from a body-based perspective. There's this sense that your, uh, your body is going to, is the machine with which you feel confident, with which you feel charismatic, which you feel turned on. And as you turn on different parts of your body, you get more charismatic, you get more turned on, you get more interesting. And as you think less, feel more, think less, feel more. I'm going to say that several times, think less and take the energy you put into thinking into feeling your heart, into feeling your grounding, which is going to increase your confidence into feeling your self-esteem, which is also going to increase your confidence. And that's the real challenge. Most people have it wrong. They're trying to, some people are trying to literally stop their, their thoughts without moving that energy somewhere, like into their body. It's a real problem. Um, so uh, Rajarsi, you, 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 that's a big ass question, buddy. It's hard to, add, to read those huge questions when we, um, when we're doing a webinar, because then I have to stop and read for, so, um, you know, it's, it's not, a, uh, that a lot of the bigger questions are meant for the actual programs. Are you able to make that succinct, the question more succinct, or does it have to be that big? I see a lot of you guys write these really long questions. You'll send it, literally some of you guys will send this to me in Instagram sometimes and I'm, and then you'll send me and I'll answer it because I really want to help you guys. But then you'll send me three or four more books and I got, I got to work during the day, guys. I can't spend all day answering questions that are this long and then not being able to help anybody else. And uh, so at a certain point, I, if you're one of those people that hasn't got a response from me, it's probably because you've sent me five giant texts in a row and I just can't keep doing that. I, I don't have all day to spend on Instagram answering your questions. Um, I have to help other people. I have paying clients. Uh, so we need to, we need to, you know, you've got to remember, are you just trying, are you just trying to get, or are you trying to give? Are you just trying to get answers or are you giving to the whole community of guys out there that really need to change? Is your question helping everybody? Is it succinct? Is it to the point? Are you getting to the point of what you want? Or are you creating confusion in your life? So think about that, guys, we, and that, that way we can all get more help and move forward faster. Same with grounding. Grounding is this idea, confidence. It has a distinct energy of grounding in it. 
And grounding is this idea that, that I'm going to let all that anxiety out of my body, that nervousness out of my body as much as I can so that I can focus on the goal. See, what confident people do is they say, how do I get to X result? How do I get to this result? This is the result they want. How do I get to it? And insecure people or people that have some self-esteem issues, and I was largely a victim to this. I had all these questions I was trying to get, get, get. I was never giving because I was too worried about me and I had to figure me out. And so when I would ask a question, I would get lost in trying to understand the and, and confusion. I wasn't really trying to get to the answer. I wasn't saying, how do I get to this end result as fast as possible? I was more or less saying, how do I deal with the obstacles between me and the end result? And I would get lost in the obstacles. And I would say, oh, look at this obstacle. Look how bad it is. Look how much work I have to do. Oh, this is going to take a lot of work. How do I deal with it, Brian? How do I deal with my car teacher, Carl? How do I deal with this obstacle? Carl, how do I deal with that obstacle? Or I had another teacher, Chad, what do I do about this obstacle? Oh my God, I'll never get past this one. At, when I'm talking like that in my head and in my body, am I focusing on getting to the end result? No. I'm focusing on getting lost in the obstacle. So the universe by law of attraction has to create that reality. It's just like people say, you know, the law of attraction is not real because I focus on, on having a million dollars and I don't get it. But the truth is, is you don't focus on having a million dollars. You might picture a million dollars in your head for about five minutes and the rest of the day you think about why you don't have a million dollars, how hard it is to get a million dollars, all the challenges to getting a million dollars, and you literally get what you're thinking about. Challenges, difficulty, then you look at your bills and you, you go, wow, this, look at this bill, look how broke I am. And you're re-manifesting the same thing over saying, yeah, I thought about a million dollars today for all of five minutes out of my whole day. And the rest of the day I spent worrying about my debt. Well, no wonder you don't have a million dollars. Successful people, people like Elon Musk, Richard Branson, they say, that's going to happen. How do I make it happen? This is my reality now. How do I make that happen? How do I move one step closer, another step closer and get excited about it? And when you start thinking like that, you start getting more and more confident. And that's how I created all my success. I'm not going to say that there weren't times I felt like I was going crazy in the process because every part of my nervous system wanted to turn away or look at the problems. But I kept refocusing. That's what the goal process at the beginning of the year was about. Refocusing back on the goal. Refocusing back on the goal. And hopefully you're all still doing that goal process. If you haven't got a copy of it, you should definitely get have gotten a copy of it because that's literally changed lives. My sister's already making so much more money. She's hitting all her goals. It's amazing to watch her. I'm so proud of her. Um, but that's because she's focusing on the end result. She's figured out how to focus on the end result, what she's creating, rather than what went wrong. So it's really simple, but it's so hard to do when you're programmed to do the opposite. And you get up in the morning and you say, this is my current reality, the details of my current reality, no drama involved. Just, I have this much money. I have these bills. This is my debt. I fully accept that. That is neither right, wrong, good, nor bad. I fully accept my situation. And I'm going to let go of all idea that there's anything bad or good or right or wrong or special about it. It's not even special. This is where I'm going. Now, how do I move another step closer to that goal today? Not how do I think about what's wrong? Not how do I ponder all my problems? How do I, and because seems the releasing is done on all that desire to ponder your problems, think about what's wrong, worry about what's not going on. And if you just make that one change alone inside of 30 to 90 days, you will see radical success in your life and you will see so much more confidence come out of your body. That one change alone, but that's not what today's call is about. That's just an idea or a concept I want you to take in as we're moving towards today's call. So um, um, uh, relate to this one, man. This is helping me with business and, and, uh, and yep, it should. This is all business stuff. That's how I use this. I make all my money. It's the same way. I mean, I think women should be in here. I don't know. Uh, Karen, are, are, are you male or female? Because Karen in the, in the English, well, it's actually spelled different. It's Karen, you're spelling it in a unique way that I've never seen. So I'm guessing you're male. But we do get women in here sometimes. And um, and your name is typically in, in the United States. Karen would be a, a, a female name typically. But where are you from? And am I saying it right? I might even be pronouncing it wrong because we, we typically spell it K-R-E-N uh, for the females. So yours is uniquely spelled, so it might even pronounce different. I 
I actually like different spellings like that. I think it's, it makes it makes the name unique and, and interesting. Um, Josh topping over obstacles instead of stopping for each one. It applies everywhere. Yeah, half of the obstacles you encounter, you'll never, you, you don't even need to worry about. The big majority of them will just resolve themselves as you move forward. And the majority of them will. And most of us, we, but we'll, we'll get stuck on one for two days, three days a month, six months, a year. Something that would have resolved itself really fast if you hadn't sat there and focused on it so much. Um, Indian uh, from Toronto. I don't know how to, how, I don't know how it's pronounced. <laughs> nice. Um, you got your way of pronouncing it. It's like my last name, Bayesian. Bayesian is how I say it. And my family says it. But if you go to where we come from, which is like French Canada, uh, Montreal, something like that, they say something like Bejo or Beju, something like Beju. It sounds really cool the way they say it. And every time I run into somebody that knows how to say it that way, I'm like, I should start using that, Brian Bejo. It sounds really cool. But, anyways. Um, let's continue on. Um, I digress. And, uh, and so let's get back to this idea of confidence. Uh, confidence is, is, is a grounding. It's an energy. It's a stopping. You guys don't realize you're naturally confident. And the only thing that stops you from feeling that natural confidence, which is feeling your whole body is your ego. It's all the thinking you do. And so in the beginning, if the thinking machine is out of control, and it's running at 100 miles an hour, teaching yourself to stop it a little bit at a time is huge. Now you can stop it fast, you can faster or slower, it depends on how much work you want to put in, effort you want to put in, um, how many attachments and aversions you've got versus how much desire you have to let go of all those attachments and aversions versus satisfy them. And that's a big part of it. Satisfying them means like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work on surrendering this huge part of my ego and becoming more confident once I've achieved X goals versus I would rather be enlightened and free and awake and totally living my, my best self now. And uh, I'm willing to let go of all my goals to have it, including women. But here's the funny part. When you do that and you actually release on all that and you get free, typically your goals start all coming to you, either that or something better. And I've said this a million times. People are terrified that if they let go of their attachments, they won't get what they want, but it's actually the opposite. That's how you get what you want. So, um, so um, all the spins going on stop us. Yes, that's right. So, uh, so let's dive in a little bit. And, um, and uh, I, I'm glad you guys really dug in last week and I'm glad you, some of you really took that meditation seriously because, because you're starting to see that how, how many of you could see last week after you started using the heart to connect to women, how easy it is to talk to women, how much easier it is than you ever realized to talk to women, even if it only happened for a little bit and you could feel it, like you could feel that warmth right here, right? Easier. Yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. We think the brain, the thinking flowing is a great answer. Mind blowing a great, we think the brain is going to fix problems and the brain thinking, we think thinking is going to fix our problems. You couldn't be further from the truth. How many artists, great artists out there say that, well, the book just came to me or when I'm playing, when I was playing the song, when I wrote the song down, it just flowed right through me. Or when I surrendered, it just happened. Or I, I took years to write this book. And then one day I surrendered and it all came through me because I stopped thinking, you know, uh, you get on the surfboard to stop thinking, you get on the snowboard to stop thinking, you, you climb the mountain to stop thinking, you play the music to stop thinking because that's where the true art happens. And that's when people become magnetized to you. They become fascinated by you because they can feel that flow happening within you. Um, and talking was actually effortless. Yeah, and that's exactly it. So you want to keep developing this. Now, let's talk about the second aspect, confidence. Um, uh, for me, it got even a bit scarier. That's perfect, Raymond. That means you're probably going in the right direction. You are going in the right direction. Uh, because you're getting more vulnerable and that's part of what creates the awesome connection you have with the women. That's why they like talking to you because they can feel some emotion coming off you as long as you don't get needy and, and whiny and like, yeah, you scare me. My lip is shaking, but I'm here to talk to you anyways. If you own your own fear, that's fucking sexy guys. So, um, so that, that sense, uh, 
of nervousness or fear that came up was as you were getting more vulnerable in the heart, which also allows for more connection. So it's a double-edged sword, right? Uh, but as you get more grounded and get more into your stomach, more into your legs, I'll say, you're actually going to feel more comfortable being more vulnerable. It's going to start to feel fun, more enjoyable, scary, fun, like getting on that roller coaster, scary, fun, jumping out of that plane, scary, fun, getting on that stage and speaking for the first time about something you're passionate about, scary, fun. It's that sense that that scary fun kicks on. And when you have really good grounding and really good self-esteem and you're having scary fun, then your turn on can kick on. No problem. Uh, usually, unless you got a lot of shame around sex, um, because your turn on comes from your sexual center. Your creativity comes from your sexual center. So really powerful. Um, biggest thing for me was state pumping confidence, faking it. Any connection I had with a girl was when I relaxed into it. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, biggest thing for any connection I have. So it's when you relax the state pump. The state pump gets you going, but you got to relax into your body at some point. And too big of a state pump will turn you into a dancing monkey. Um, yeah, I started to feel a lot more fear from my stomach. That's where your self-esteem is. But yes, also more fun and more turn on as well. Perfect. Um, why is neediness coming up when I'm open? Why do you think? I just kind of explained it, but let me go through it. I didn't really explain it. I kind of hinted to it because when you're vulnerable, all your insecurities come up, all your fear comes up and you have one of two directions. You either own your fear and your insecurities. You say, yeah, I'm a man. I can handle it. I'm scared. Or it's like, please save me. Please protect me. One is like a little boy. One is like a man. A man can walk into his emotions and ground them. A little boy looks to mommy to ground them. And women don't want to fuck the little boy, to put it blunt. They don't want to date a little boy. They want to they want to take care of and nurture the little boy and help the boy grow. But if the boy keeps acting like a mama's boy, they will eventually get disgusted with him because he's not growing. He's not learning from his neediness and becoming more and more of a man. It's their instincts. to, And so a lot of guys get addicted to getting women to nurture them and feel sorry for them because women will do it for a bit but they won't want to be with you uh, on an intimate level. They will see you as a project, something to take care of like a child at best. And sometimes if you're an adult man acting like a child, a lot of them will get disgusted and walk away. And that's just the blunt truth. Um, and so a lot of guys get addicted to getting women to feel sorry for them because a lot of women will do it. And then wondering why they're never getting sex from these women. Um, Yeah, putting the mama's boy on a woman is tough. I used to do it too. You know, I was I was raised by a bunch of women and my mother, uh, you know, kind of trained it into me and I had to break it. I had to be re-raised in a sense. And that's what having mentors and teachers does. It helps to, we help to, you know, my teacher did wonders for me and, you know, I'm spreading that, spreading that energy back out. Um, Roke. Did you just not listen to my whole talk? That question is the opposite of everything I just talked about. Um, well, I guess it's not because you're talking about the neediness versus the vulnerability, but neediness is, so I, I apologize, Roke, but the neediness is part of the vulnerability. Um, so you own that too. Own that too. Yeah, hey, I'm feeling needy and I don't give a fuck. I'm going to ignore it. I'll just let it run in the background. Yeah, I'm feeling I want your validation and I don't care. You don't have to say this stuff out loud, but if you have that attitude, then then you can separate from what you're feeling in your body, but you'll still let run what you feel. Anything you push down is only going to get stronger rope. And then it's going to start to come out of you later when it builds up. So that's why being able to look at your neediness, own your neediness, say, yeah, I'm needy. I don't care. I'm, uh, you know, yeah, I'm shaking. Yeah, I want your validation. Or yeah, I might be crushed if you don't validate me, but that's okay. Now, don't literally go out and say those words. You could once, but if somebody says something to you, like, hey, you, you seem needy. Well, yeah, I'm probably the most needy guy in the room. I feel I feel totally needy, but fuck my neediness. I don't care because I'm stronger than that. That's kind of a different attitude, right? I'm being a little over the top, kind of pushing you guys, but still, it's kind of fun, you know? Um 
I did the meditation, then went to the store with uh, the goal of three compliments. Felt too scared to do any of them, but mostly stayed out of my head the whole time, which was a step in the right direction for me. Great attitude, Zeke. And that's exactly right. Um, so if you can't do the three compliments because you're more vulnerable after doing the meditation because your heart's open, what can you do? And the meditation we do today is going to help. It's going to help with that. But what could you have done instead so that you did accomplish a goal of talking to three women? Could you have asked them directions? Could you have asked them a, 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 to give them a compliment about their, you know, well, you said compliments. Could you get, instead of a compliment about them, like you're beautiful, a compliment about something, that, that's a beautiful scarf. Or could you have asked them a question about something they were looking at or about to buy? Or could you ask their opinion on something? Just random, pick something just so you accomplish the goal. Not with the intent of winning the girls over, but with the intent to feel the tension and process all the vulnerability that comes up. That's the difference between using an opinion opener to get a girl and using an opinion opener to process and, and develop your confidence. I look at all of this stuff when I go to do it as a form of building my confidence and knowing that as my confidence builds, the girls will come naturally. So, um, okay, good, 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 good. Um, I want to cover one more thing. It's kind of random. And then we're going to get into this. By the way, um, how many of you guys are coming to Miami? Before I get into the next piece, before we get into the meditation, who's coming to Miami? Hey, Jonathan, you're here, man. You're a student this week. Nice. Welcome to the call. Uh, I'll be there. Um, nice. I am um, cool. And are you guys coming live? Or are you going to be online? Live. Nice. Be great to have you, Gerald. Live. Yes, John. It's going to be a lot of fun. I love Miami. We're going to be talking about flow states. We're going to be talking about flow states and dating, just like flow state on surfboards, flow state and on in music, flow state and anything you do. We're going to be talking about that dating should be more like a flow state. Flirting should be more like a flow state. It shouldn't be something you think about. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to start out that way, but there is a path to getting to a flow state. And we're going to be talking about that path to getting to a flow state. You can use this for other things besides dating. You could use this in business. You can use this in art. You can use this in, in athleticism. And all flow states are is I'm going to give you some assignments to do while you're there. And we're going to see your response to them, but to while you're at lunch, things like that. But Flow states are activated through tension and through the proper application of tension. We're going to be getting into that in Miami. Uh, we're going to be getting into working with the models in Miami to help demonstrate what a flow state looks like and how it works. And as you develop it more and more, stuff that was hard to get turned on in the beginning, like let's say a heart, starts to activate at will. And you start to be able to open your heart and just say, hey, hi, and just let that feeling come through, which is what we started last week. The next thing is you're going to start to be able to open, drop into your grounding here more or drop down into your turn on more and feel your turn on and relax into it. And, uh, and that becomes really powerful. And so these, these abilities, if you want to really develop them and you want to have fun with them, click on the link in the, in the chat and sign up for the, the summit. There's only a few seats left. I don't know how many, I can't remember, but there's not many left. Um, and I know the week before is when everybody buys. Everybody wants to wait till the last week and then they all start buying. Plus, we've got an online option. If some of you would rather watch online, uh, I would rather be in Miami. Well, I will be. Um, I had this, this Bitcoin seminar I wanted to go to. I called up and it was already sold out. And I was like, it was only 400 bucks. I was like, dude, I'll be there. It's in Texas. I was so excited to go. And they're like, well, you can watch online. And I'm like, I want to go. <laughs> I was tempted to just like keep pushing and say, how can I get in there? I did. I had just found out about it and I'm not a big Bitcoin. I mean, I am a, I am a big Bitcoin guy, but big, I like it. I don't sit there and trade all day or anything like that. I just hodl. But uh, I was definitely interested in going and learning more about the technology because this technology is going to be awesome. And being at the event is everything, in my opinion, meeting people, networking, building friendships, invest, stepping it. Do you know how much more tension you step into to go to an event than you do to watch it online? And it's easy to avoid the tension online, to wander off and go do something else, take too long at lunch. But at the event, you don't want to miss a thing. I spent all this money. I flew here. I got a hotel. So just throwing those options out, man. I think the VIP is all sold out, our VIP dinner. So there's none of those available, unfortunately, guys. But it would be great to have you. So click on the link. Check it out. Uh, camaraderie is the best part. You're absolutely right, Cody. So, um, so getting into... Um, where was I at? You guys remember? Was I was I about to get into the meditation? Or was I talking about one more thing before I did? 
Um, I guess we're going to get right into it. So, uh, so let's talk about, uh, let's call it, it's more releasing or revealing, or revealing, or revealing on your body. And it's an embodiment process that we're going to be taking a look at. Um, your body is a, is a machine to bring things from the non-physical to the physical, from an idea into physical form. This is a, uh, this is a little device I use a lot. It's an interesting little device. It writes like paper, feels like paper. It's called paper, P-A-P-Y-R. And it's a lot of fun. And I use it for, I got tons of notes in here. It's digital. And, um, and, and somebody thought this up and they, they made it and it started as an idea in their mind, an idea mixed with emotion and they got turned on for it and they wanted to create it, but to bring it into form, to bring it into physical dense form where it's an actual real thing, they had to ground it out. You know, they had to have some notes there. Don't read my notes. Um, they had to, see, just wrote an S on there, but they had to ground it into form. You know, they had to, they got the idea, they got turned on, they, they maybe broke it down on the screen. They wrote stuff, notes down, just like I'm doing in here. And then they moved to moving it to the physical form, creating the pieces, figuring out what they need to do. And to step into that much tension, because to bring it into physical form is even more tension than creating an, even an idea. They had to ground out all that tension. It's scarier because that's where things go wrong. That's where concept is great. But when they start to bring it, that's where things go wrong. Your ideas start to fail. You see the flaws. You have to adjust for them. And the more grounded you are, the more you're going to find those flaws are fun. They're just like waves you ride. That every challenge is just an obstacle that you resolve leading to an ultimate success. It was the same attitude as the Wright brothers. Wright brothers stepped into a lot of tension. You know, nobody had ever flown before. And here they are out of bicycle parts trying to build something that's going to take them way up in the air like the birds, knowing that if they fall off, they could die. And that's pretty ballsy when you think about it. You know, people telling them it can't be done. People telling them they're crazy, but they're doing it anyways. And that takes a lot of grounding because that's where you can easily feel really stupid, dumb, vulnerable, scared nervous. Every excuse in the world shows up at that point. So stepping out there and talking to girls is a whole nother level of bringing women into being in your life than it is thinking about talking to girls. Meditating on talking to girls gets the energy and alignment in your body, gets you excited, gets you turned on for it, lines up the successes in the virtual world, the imaginary world, so that they can come into the physical world. It's very essential. Because otherwise, you might just run into wall after wall after wall in the non-physical world so you don't get your mind straight and then get burned out. But if you get the internal straight and then you go out to approach, things are going to happen. And sometimes that's scarier than failing over and over. Some people would rather, they say they'd rather have success, but the truth is they'd rather fail over and over because they don't want the responsibility of having to show up when the woman shows up, having to guess, you know, having sex uh, can be scary for some people. Oh, what if I get her pregnant? What if I get a disease? What if she, I have to be her boyfriend now? All these new possibilities open up when you actually move something into physical form. All these new responsibilities show up. So to be more confident, you need that grounding. As your nervousness comes up and your stories rise up in your body from the vulnerability, you got to learn to relax it back down. It's going to feel like it rises up like this, and you're going to feel yourself start to rise up in your body, walling off at the heart, walling off at the stomach, and then you got to bring it back down and learn to feel your legs again, learn to feel the lower part of your body. That's what's essential. Um, so kind of let that in. Um I get success almost immediately after good meditation. It scares the shit out of me every time. Responsibility. There is a fear f with sex for me. There's, and this is not uncommon, guys. We run into it all the time. So let's dive in. Let's play with this a little bit. Now, I want to invite you guys, if you're listening to this on the recording this week or you're doing it right now, I want to invite you into two potential ways to do this. You could do it sitting or you could actually do this standing. And why would I say to do this standing? Because you might want to put this, play this on headphones this week when you're out. Maybe you go do some uh, test approaches. Maybe you go do some highs. Maybe you go do some stops. Maybe you're working on your confidence. 
and you get a little anxiety ridden, you get a little vulnerable, you know, you worked, opened yeah. your heart a little bit. Maybe some girl actually liked you and it made you really nervous. And now you want to go ground yourself out. Um, maybe you want to develop the ability to ground yourself out in the moment standing there. Maybe you want to develop the ability to go sit somewhere and ground yourself out. So you could do it either way, standing or sitting, but I'd highly recommend you get your body used to grounding both ways. So when you're sitting down, you can ground all the tension out of your body, the vulnerability out of your body. And when you're standing up, you can do it too. Number two, it's not going to be perfect right away. You're going to get a little better and a little better with time. The more you ground, practice grounding, the better you'll get. The more you connect it to your heart, the better you get. And so you want to bring up that vulnerability in the heart, then ground it. Bring up that vulnerability in the heart, then ground it. You want to get to the point where you can kind of do this stuff without needing to listen to a recording of me. The honest truth is, is this is going to become muscle memory for you, muscle memory. And as it becomes more muscle memory, you're going to be able to ground easier and faster just by bringing up the idea in your body and feeling and moving, feeling the earth beneath you. Now I'm going to say a lot of stuff uh, when we do this. I'm going to give lots of suggestion in a sense and and and, and reveals every do a revealing process with you. And and if things don't fully make sense, that's okay. You don't have to try to figure it out. Your body gets it more than you probably do. Um, and in time, if you keep doing this stuff, your body will get it more and more. And so don't try to analyze every detail. Uh, I know a lot of you will stop in the middle of the meditation to write stuff to me, and I see it. But a lot of times I wonder, are you actually doing the the release or the reveal if you're doing that? Or are you thinking? Are you analyzing? Are you trying to write it down? Um, and because I know there's that analytical guy out there that wants to track every little piece because he doesn't want to miss anything. But in that, he misses everything. He's got every word down, but he misses all the feeling, all the depth of feeling. And so I want to invite you into maybe be letting it be okay to miss some stuff and then listening to it again and again until it becomes part of your nervous system and rather than part of your analytical mind. Um, when I go into high enough tension, I find I can get into the spins and it can take hours to resolve. How do you deal with fear of the spins? And we're not talking about that right now, Neil. Now we're going to be doing uh, grounding right now. This could help. So I would try this first, but um but that's a whole that's a, that's a question for another for another topic for right now. Then maybe I can address it at the end when I take questions, if you remind me. Then, um, okay, everybody. So get in a comfortable position. You can be standing. You can be sitting. Uh, get in some place where you feel really good and start allowing yourself to take some natural breaths. You don't have to suck in and do deep breaths. Just comfortable natural breaths. Breathe through your nose, by the way, and through your nose. Relax and now feel yourself breathe down into your stomach. We really want to get lower into your body, not into your chest. For you, so for you chest breathers, this is like breathing into my chest, and this is breathing into my stomach. You see, the chest moves a lot less, and I my air my my I drop much lower to my body. And if I really allow myself to relax, relax the back of my legs and my perineums, I can feel. I can feel all the way down when I breathe in, down my legs. And that's what we're working towards. So just allow yourself to take a few more breaths, feeling as low in your body as your body's willing to let you. And don't force it, because with time, you'll just get more realizations and more understanding. It's like anything you do over and over again. You just kind of figure things out with time. Dribbling a basketball, surfing, snowboarding, skiing, dancing. The more you do the moves, the more you get realizations, understanding, things get kind of figured out for you. And that's really the awesome part. You just do it over and over until it makes sense. So with those breaths, imagine that each inhale just brings in relaxation, healing energy, uh, more feeling, more depth of feeling, more vulnerability. And with each exhale, you let go of any tension, stress, or confusion that is more than your body can enjoy and handle. There's that sweet spot of tension. That's where we want to be. That sweet spot that activates flow state, turn on, that directs energy. And not so much that you cut off energy or close off the flow. So perfect. Just keep noticing how those breaths relax you more and more or send you into the zone more and more. And begin to feel your body. And now what I want you to do is welcome your heart. 
Last week, we did a little work with opening the heart, and I want you to ask the heart to open as much as it's willing. Right now, ask it to open and begin to feel the space around you and notice what it feels like. And if you want, you can have your eyes open and do this, especially as you get more advanced, or you can do it with your eyes closed. Just allow your body to relax and feel. For me, it can feel like a warmth or a tingle right in my chest, and I begin to feel the space around me. I reach out and touch the walls, the artwork, because particularly anything that's 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 going to have some artistry or femininity or vulnerability to it is going to feel interesting to the heart. Your heart's going to be pulled into it, possibly colors. And just notice what that feels like. And now begin to relax into the back of the heart, which is basically in your back. And notice what that feels like. And just imagine the back of your heart is like a frame for the front, and you can relax into it, into your back, and begin to allow the front to open even more because you're framing it with the back, allowing it to connect to the whole space around you, giving it support. Your masculine is supporting your feminine, working in balance and in time. And now as you feel, begin to feel the whole space around you. You can spread out if you want. You can spread beyond the room you're in to the whole apartment or house you're in or wherever you're at, space you're in to the whole building, maybe you're in, there's multiple units in the building you're in, maybe even the whole block. And it's just a concept in your mind. You can spread out and just imagine feeling all of that. Like right now I can see the street and I'm seeing it in a sense through my heart. I'm feeling my whole street out here. I'm feeling all the buildings, the people walking their dogs. Now that doesn't mean I know who and what is where, it's just this idea. And I'm sending the sense of feeling to all of it just being with it and it feels really good and if I want I can come all the way back to this room again and just begin to feel and relax perfect now begin to welcome up the image of you meeting or talking to or flirting with that perfect girl whatever she looks like just start feeling in the details and you can see her in your mind's eye. But then I want you to drop her as you, as you really get excited about her, drop her down into your heart and see if you can find a sense of appreciation for the image you're creating. See if you can get a sense that you're looking through your eyes, talking to her and she's standing right in front of you. Maybe you're flirting, maybe you're laughing, maybe you just approached her. She's smiling. Maybe she reaches out and gently touches you because she's having so much fun with you, maybe on the elbow or the arm. Maybe she looks at you a little longingly, starts to lean in and gets a little closer or asks you to take her number. Or maybe you ask her for her number and she excitedly gives it to you. Whatever excites you, whatever turns you on, just kind of let your mind fill in the blanks. And don't be dogmatic with it, just play with it. So if, you're, if you go to create a blonde, but your mind keeps creating a brunette, play with the idea of a brunette. Maybe there's a reason your mind is creating a brunette. If you go to talk to one girl, maybe there's two girls. Let your mind do it. Sometimes your subconscious might be trying to show you something, teach you something. So let it fill in the blanks for you. And then again, drop that thought, that feeling down into your heart. And then let your heart open and project into the space around you, creating almost like a 3D image of you talking to, flirting with, approaching this beautiful girl or whatever else you're doing with her, you can decide. And there's a lot of things you can be doing with her. I'm sure your imagination is already going there. So just let yourself sit with that. Let yourself be with that. Let yourself feel that. And notice that as you bring it down into your heart, into the space around you, there's more tension in it. There's more tension in that idea. There might even be more turn on in that idea. And with that said, I want you to begin to now feel your whole back. As your heart begins to project in this, project it into the space around you, what does your back feel like? Can you relax into your whole spine and feel your whole spine from the base of your spine all the way up to the top of your head? Feel what each vertebrae feels like. Relax into it. 
If you're sitting, relax into your chair. If you're standing, relax down, up and down the body. and Just feel what it feels like. And feel how when you feel your spine, you begin to feel more relaxed. You have a sense of support because you're thinking less, feeling more. So as you talk to this girl, flirt with this girl, or do whatever with her, there's a sense, I've got my own back. I've got my own back. So just relax into that now. And notice what that feels like. As much as you're willing. Now allow yourself to feel your back as much as you do. And if there's resistance to feeling your back, I want you to welcome that too. So just say yes to that resistance. And just say yes to any and all resistance you're experiencing right now, even if it's only 1%. Yes to that tiny little bit of resistance or that large amount of resistance. If there's numbness, just say yes to that. And just be with whatever you're feeling. If it feels warm and dingly, it starts to feel good, say yes to that. And now begin to say yes to the warmth and tingle that is there no matter what you're feeling, even if it's only 1% or 100%. And with that said, just allow it to sink in a little deeper, that there is a part of you that can access feeling good no matter what you're feeling, even if it's a tiny little bit. So begin to move from that part of you that feels as good as you do, resting in your back to that part of you that feels as resistant as you do, no matter what it is. And notice what that feels like. And the part of you that feels as good as you do. And then the part of you that feels as resistant as you do. And then the part of you that feels as good as you do. And then the part of you that feels as resistant as you do. And one more time. The part of you that feels as good as you do. Welcome it. Just be with it. And the part of you that feels as resistant as you do. And welcome that. Be with that. And then just let it all go. And welcome the good feeling again. As much as you do. And welcome this idea of courage. How much courage can you feel in your back? How much choice can you feel in your back? How much decisiveness can you feel in your back? They're all parts of courage. Just allow yourself to feel choice, decisiveness, and courage. Welcoming these feelings along and in your back relaxing into the chair or the way you're standing, just feeling it. And as you roll down your consciousness down your back, begin to notice what your sacrum feels like. If you want to, you can move it a little bit and explore it. And notice again, as you move your sacrum, is there any tightness? Actually not again for the first time, but still. Is there any tightness in the glutes? Is there any tightness in the perineum or the taint? Is there any tightness in the muscles deep inside the glutes or the ass? If there is, just ask your body to let it go. Let it go as much as it's willing. Just let it fade away, drift away as much as it's willing without force. And just be with that now. And now one more time, welcome any and all sensations, feelings of tightness or resistance that might be in the glutes, the perineum, the taint, which is the same thing, or the ass area. And notice if there's any pictures or images, thoughts or feelings that are coming up with that. Notice if there's any sense that what you're feeling is right or wrong, good or bad, that it means something. Just ask yourself, can you let all that go? Can you let all sense that it's right or wrong, good or bad, it has any meaning go? And with that, can you let go of all the images, thoughts, feelings, and emotions, sensations that come up? And just notice what you're feeling now. Notice if you're starting to feel down your legs a little bit more. Because ultimately, as you start to relax in this area, 
you start to feel down the backs of your legs more. And if you relax into the back of your legs, all the way down through the calves, you can start to feel into the ground beneath you sometimes. And as you do this more and more, as you get more relaxed from the bottom of the feet all the way up to the ass and the glutes, you begin to get this sense of connection to the earth, this relaxed, comfortable connection. So take a moment now and begin to notice what the back of your legs feel like. And welcome any tension or stress or resistance in this area. And notice all the thoughts, stories, images, feelings, sensations that come up with this. Notice any sense of right or wrong, good or bad, or that it means something about you. Ask yourself, can you let that go? Can you let all judgment, right or wrong, good or bad? Since you're giving it meaning, can you just let it go? And with that, all the images, thoughts, and feelings that come up with it. And now begin to move all the way down to the bottom of the feet. Feel the feet on the ground. Feel any tension you might be holding in the bottom of your feet as the weight of your body could be on the ground or your feet if you're sitting, resting on the ground. Begin to ask your body to become aware of what you're feeling in your feet. All the thoughts, the emotions, sensations, and the feelings. And then just ask your body to let it go. Let it go as much as it's willing. To let the feet just relax a little bit, a little bit more, or a lot. And then one more time, welcome any sense of courage, choice, or decisiveness that rises up in its place as you begin to relax the back of your legs, your glutes, matter of fact, your whole back. And with that said, feel the whole back of your body, the back of your legs, your sac your glutes, your perineum, your sacrum, the back of your spine. And just notice how there's a sense that you can sink and connect into the ground. Sometimes you get a sense you can see into the ground through the bottom of your feet. Sometimes you get a sense you can see into the ground through the base of your spine. And just notice what that feels like. If you do, if you don't, as more and more resistance just lets go, with time it'll probably naturally develop. And now one more time, welcome any sense of courage that's rising up your spine, waking up in your body, any sense of confidence, choice. Letting go of all resistance. Letting go of a little bit more, a little bit more, and even a little bit more. And as that courage rises up and you rest in the back of your body, one more time, ask your heart to open, to begin to feel the space around you. And notice what that feels like. As you connect the two together. Now with that said, just let go. Let go of everything. And when you feel ready, go ahead and come into the space and put some comments into the uh, chat box and we'll begin a discussion about this. But take your time, don't rush. Let yourself come out when you're ready, there is no rush. This is recorded, you can watch it again. I think Nicholas liked it. Nice, I'm glad, Liam. That's what it's for, man. To help get some of that tension out of your body. Good, Raymond. Nice, Liam. Felt like going through a portal more and more. More and more of me is on the other side. All down the front. Yeah, the back opens the front. Once the back is supporting the front of your body, the front of your body starts opening more and more. That's very common. 
because the back is the masculine, the front is the, the feminine, the front can express itself freely when the masculine is there to support it. Nice, Roke. Congratulations, man. Perfect. Okay, good. It sounds like everybody got something out of this one. Um, awesome one. That's perfect. Sam's word give you, oh, you were, you were here this weekend, Cody. Nice. Um, yeah, Sam is awesome. I love Sam. So let's dive in. Who's got questions about what we just did before I go to any other questions? A strong feeling of courage and anger. And anger is very close to courage. So you're moving up the scale. So that's really good. A lot of times when I ground myself, I feel that I'm passive and not very proactive. What should I do? That's because you're probably going down the scale and not up the scale unless you're going into acceptance. If you feel passive, like your energy is shutting down and not expanding out, you're going in the wrong direction. You know, you're, um, you're not grounding. You're probably trying to think your way into grounding, therefore shutting off energy. Grounding is a feeling process. It's a stopping of thinking. It's a meditative, it's a, it's a, it's a surrendering process. A lot of people, I, I see clients all the time who try to think their way into grounding. They use their head to think about feeling their body rather than feeling their body and letting it come to their head. So if you feel, everybody do this, feel a part of your body and then let your consciousness experience you feeling it. And then you can switch and use your head to think about feeling a part of your body. One, I'm using this to feel this. I'm thinking about it. The other, I'm just feeling this and surrendering, feeling the whole room and feeling where this fits into the scope of everything I'm feeling in my whole body. I'm not trying to study any of it. It comes and goes as it pleases. That difference is huge. Um, is the flow part of communication? Yes. Yeah. It comes in through, it comes through the body. The body's the conduit for it. It's on the YouTube channel, Bully Boulevard. It's last week's, uh, it's last week's call. They're all, I believe they're all on the YouTube channel. Am I, I'm not missing something, right? I mean, a uh, team. So practice, Rajarshi, you got to practice. The more you practice, the more you own it. It's got to become muscle memory. Um, and don't get dogmatic about it. Sometimes you're going to be up and more ungrounded. And with time over time, you'll get more and more grounded. If you get dogmatic and try to force it, you're going to get it into your head about it. So that's not good. I'm opening the sides, not being. Uh, legs are buzzing. Good, good, good. Good job, Karen. I think that was just more of a comment. Cool. Yes, it's there. Uh, yes, YouTube channel. Nice. So Cairo is confirming that. Um, I just had a massive realization. Good job, right, Raymond? Um, so awesome, guys. Sounds like you did really good. Um, I'm going to read this last one, Xavier. When I set the intention to feel my legs, I think I tense up my legs. Yep, that's because you're, that's the reverse wired, we call that which then muscles in the top of my head and forehead and eyebrows light up and start to hurt. Yeah, because you're trying to think your way is what I was just talking about into feeling. You don't understand the difference between letting yourself feel something and forcing yourself to feel something. If you try to force yourself to feel something, it's work. The brain will perceive it as work. It'll activate more brainwave activity, which will pull energy up to your head and then cause the muscles to tense up. If you let yourself feel like a true meditative process, then you, you slow down brainwave activity and you surrender into feeling. So you might have to practice it more and more and not hyper-focus. Usually the, the, the best fix to that is not hyper-focusing. I can focus on my hand and try to feel it and forget about everything else, or I can feel everything, like feel the room, feel my body, feel the chair, and then just notice how my hand feels in the midst of all that, okay? It'd be like getting a massage and trying to study every move the massage therapist makes, trying to get it perfect so you get the best massage possible. Well, that's just going to be work. So uh, so work on that. 
projection through the heart of myself meeting a girl felt like a window into something new. Awesome, Zeke. I love it. Okay, guys. Really good work. Sounds like you guys had a, a lot of really good stuff today. I'm going to go over and look at these questions really quick. Um, I'll come back to Rajarshi's if we have time. It's really long. Sorry, bro. You didn't write a shorter one when I asked you to. Uh, had a tough breakup early in December, trying to feel my body as much as I can. So I release grief, guilt, et cetera, to raise my self-esteem and confidence again. Any really solid tips to help get through this? Yes. Uh, you got to feel the grief and the guilt and all that. So the, the fastest, one of the fastest process, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day because I did this when I had my breakup a while back. Uh, I was with a girl for several years. We were living together. It was an awesome relationship. We broke up for reasons beyond us caring about each other. Um, had a lot to do with what she wanted as far as the future and family and what I wanted were different. So when I broke up with her, it was a lot of, um, of asking a simple question over and over. What does she give me that I can't give myself? And answers like companionship, love, intimacy, depth of feeling. I love cuddling with her at night when she'd come home from work. I loved, you know, I love it when she get up and get all dressed sexy for me. You know, there was a sense of these feelings. And then what I would do is release on whatever comes up over and over all day long. This, this caused a lot of crying in me because I was releasing. And that's what you want. You want all that grief to come out of you. And what I would do is release until I felt like I could get some sense of that in myself. Like if they, she gave me a sense of connection, can I get a deeper sense of connection with myself and feel more connected to the world? If she gave me a sense of, in, of, of intimacy, can I find a little bit more intimacy within myself? Because the reason I'm craving it from her so much, listen to this, the reason I'm craving it from her so much is I'm not getting it within myself. But yet all of these feelings are coming from you. Even if she's there, she's the catalyst, but they're coming up as chemical responses in your own body. So you are capable of recreating all those sensations on your own through meditations till eventually they become a part of you to feel like a whole being. And then what will happen is you'll start healing. You'll need her less and less. This doesn't mean you won't miss her and process the missing, but you won't be so attached. You're releasing all the attachments to her because you need her to fulfill a hole in, in your consciousness. And so that's what this question does. What do I need to, um, what, what am I trying to get from her that I can't get from myself? That's the question I would use over and over and I'd release on it. Okay. Um, okay, you guys wrote a lot there. So we're going to go up. So that's Andrew. Uh, hopefully you got that, Andrew, and you're still on the call. Um, but for all of you, it's a good question. Um, nice. Somebody almost fell when they were doing it. That's, I, I went a little longer than I intended, guys. I didn't, I intended this to be short and easy, and I kind of went nuts with it. So awesome. Um, what about sex? Okay, okay. Simple answer to sex, Roke. Lester Levinson said uh, he he really wasn't interested in sex anymore as he got more enlightened and more awake. And somebody asked him why was that? Because he used to crave sex. He had all kind. He'd have lots of sex. He he chased women. You know, he was a womanizer. Um, and he said, "Well, that that thing you're chasing from sex is pure intimacy and connection. It's a sense of oneness with another person. That's what an orgasm is. You're completely surrendering to another person." And that pleasure you get from orgasm, he goes, I live in all the time. I'm feeling that all the time. So I don't need sex to feel that, that, that pleasure because I'm walking in that pleasure. That's what it feels like. Now, I haven't experienced it to that degree. Don't get me wrong. I still love sex. But what I have felt is more and more turned on pleasure in my body every year that I do this. I'm moving in that direction to where my body, I can, my body is becoming a more sensitive, pleasurable machine. So you take that any way you want. I'm not giving up sex anytime soon that I plan to, but, uh, and then here's the other thing that happens. I enjoy sex more and more. And if I'm not getting sex from one person, I know I'll get it. And like, we move on. I know there's going to be somebody just as awesome or better that comes later. Like if this, if it stop having it with this woman, she's not my source of sex. Sex comes from my believing sex will be there. So then if she leaves me, somebody else will show up. That's awesome too. And it's going to be as good or better. And it seems to always get better and better and better because I'm getting more and more comfortable with my own body every year. So there's the short, there's the long, short answer. Um, okay. I'm going to go to the next question over here. Um, 
Juan Sebastian. A lot of times when I ground myself, I feel that I'm very passive and not very proactive. Well, I already answered that question. Uh, what if I cannot focus on what you're saying because I'm too busy almost crying? Then cry and listen to the recording again. You don't have to hear everything I say. Your subconscious picks up on the bulk of it, especially if you're in a theta state or an alpha state. And it's going to hear a lot of it anyways. And if you try to hyper-focus on everything I'm saying, you'll probably get it in more analytically than feeling anyways. And then when you're, when you're more present and your heart's really open, uh, you'll reach a point where you'll be in a nice, beautiful, relaxed state and you'll just be hearing all the words. You'll be really focused, but you won't be analytical. And that's, gonna, that's a nice state to be in, but it doesn't happen overnight. So just kind of let it happen. Um, Emmanuel, um, have a question about ending a relationship. She wants to stay friends, but I believe I may get more growth from just cutting the cord usually and dealing with the loneliness and want for validation. Feel a bit confused. Yeah. If you feel like that, you should probably do it. Um, because if you've got codependency with her and she sounds like she's got codependency with you, this idea that you guys are going to stay friends usually ends up in a back and forth relationship. Some people can pull it off, but they're usually very, they're not, they don't have this, they, they're, they're very solid grounded people. And when they break up, they, and then, and then they usually even take time apart before they even attempt it. They take, take like at least three months before you even attempt to be your friend and completely work on letting her go. And you may find you don't even want to be your friend at that point. Um, but if you do at that point, notice if you start getting territorial, possessive, things like that. And that's, and, and so I've done both and I've grown from both from working through all my attachments to ex-girlfriends. But one of the most powerful things I had was when I was codependent was learning to let girls, let girls go fast because I would be attached to them out of a codependent relationship. And I was teaching my body. I don't need her to believe in myself. Just let her go and walk away. And that changed the type of women that came to me more fat, faster than anything else. When I let go of a really narcissistic codependent girlfriend, and I sham, slammed the door on that, that type of girl never came into my life again. I only got more confident women, better women, and it just kept getting better and better and better. Now, I'm not saying that's 100% true all the time. You have to decide. But if your gut's telling you this, go from there. I do have a few exes that it, they weren't very, you know, they're friends of mine, I, but I'm, I'm not attached to them. I'm like, hey, if they, I don't get jealous. I don't get attached. And I'm pretty good at not getting jealous anyway. So um, as a guy who's largely in apathy, I think this may count as giving. And I, and I kid you not, I told this girl about fearless and she's busting my balls. That's awesome that I'm in a cult. Awesome. Tell you are. I was asked to, <laughs> just in a joking way, not seriously. I was just asking a question during the meditation. How does the cult feel about blowjobs under the table during Zoom calls? <laughs> More power to you, man. That's for, for you to decide. If you want to get a blowjob while you listen to your Zoom calls and you can get the girl to do that, I would say have all, and you both enjoy it. That's, that's perfect. Go do it, man. And, uh, and, and you, you have to decide for you. Matter of fact, um, you have all the power, buddy, not me. All I can do is, is, is guide you based on experience. And then you make that decision. And, and, and as a woman, invite her to the calls, invite her to the videos, you know, women typically love it. Women are our biggest supporters. So I'm, I'd be more than well, happy to have more women on the calls. I'm always inviting them. Um, I crave a lot of sex. Wow. Oh yeah. How do you deal with loneliness? Here's the funny thing, Roke. I used to crave a lot of sex. Now I crave quality sex. Not a lot. I don't need a lot anymore, but when I have it, I want it to be fucking awesome. And I don't give a fuck about quantity. I have a fuck about quality. That changed with age, I think. I used to though crave a lot of sex and then I'd be, I wouldn't enjoy it as much because I was constantly, I need to get laid. There was a sense of the notch on the bedpost versus the depth of feeling with this human being in front of me. Um, what do I think about nofap? Um, it has benefits. I think if you're con if you're a chronic masturbator, I think nofap can be great. Um, I think uh, nofap can be great for conserving energy, for getting things done, for focus, especially uh, developing the. And if you, especially if you're using masturbation to avoid feeling, nofap can be awesome because it'll force you to feel stuff, and your energy will build. Um, but I don't believe it has to be done 100% all the time, all year long. It can be done, you know, here and, and you know, for a period of time. 
uh, especially as you, as you, if you're having trouble wanting sex a lot too, and you got a partner, NoFab can be amazing. Um, Dr. Glover talks about openly talks about how him and his, he doesn't, he only comes about once a month. Um, and he says, and, but he has sex every day and he's in his sixties, man. And, um, he says I have sex every day because I don't let myself come much. And I'm constantly horny for my wife and we have amazing sex and you can still get to a point where you feel orgasm you just don't ejaculate that's separating ejaculation from orgasm you can go look up materials on that like the multi-orgasmic man by man talk chia stuff like that and um where the energy more goes up your spine uh then and goes through your body and actually gives you more energy rather than depleting your energy so that's another thing you can get into i think it's great stuff and i don't think don't i think anything where you get obsessive we can never come again or I can I have to do this hundred percent. Can that's where you're getting obsessive the other way, you know? So there's a, there's a healthy balance to everything. And that's what, you know, when the mind becomes obsessive, you can really cause a lot of chemical imbalances in the body too. Um, yeah, there's a, I, so there's a YouTube video Andrew's talking about where I talked to Glover about that. Um, so that would be a good one um, for you guys to check out. What is the best way to overcome fear of success and where does it typically come from? Uh, I always look at fear of success typically most of the time. And and with each person, it can be a little different, but I look at it as responsibility or fear of responsibility. The more success you get, the more things you have to do. And so you got to cut out other things. As you become more successful, uh, like if I get re, if I really get into, like I'm going to start a business, no big deal. I got one client, two clients, 10 clients, a hundred clients. Now I got to really focus, build systems, get machine going, get everything, keep the container going. Uh, I got to make sure all the clients are satisfied. I got to deal with the complaints and then you can build a system around that to make it systematized. So it's not as much work eventually, but in the beginning, all that responsibility that, that being seen by the clients, by the people, by the people that work for you. Uh, dealing with the IRS, paying the payments, all that stuff all starts to rise. And then what happens is because, because of uh, the abundance of energy, you're creating a lot of energy is what's happening is you're stimulating a lot of energy from that success. Uh, you, your body is only trained to handle so much energy and then you want to shut down. So you got to actually expand your ability to handle energy, which everybody can do. So, and, and if you don't, you're going to shrink yourself again. You're going to shrink it back down because you're not going to want more, more energy than your body can handle because you haven't expanded your ability to handle more energy. And that's what people that grow really big are good at. They're good at expanding their ability to handle energy. That, that would be, if I ever get into a, a teaching abundance programs, how to create money, how to create success, that's the stuff I'd be getting into. It's the same with women though. As you get more women in your life, a lot more energy comes with that. A lot of energy comes at you, you know, and that's, that's huge. So be ready for that. And some people want to sabotage that. They don't want to deal with the women's emotions, uh, the responsibilities, them calling them, texting, and then, oh my God, I'll just be alone, you know? And, <laughs> but the truth is, is we really crave connection, guys. We really need it. It's super healthy for us. Um, any thoughts on blue light at night, morning? Yeah, it's not, I don't, I, I think at night you should cut it down, you know? I don't think, uh, I don't think you should be, uh, it's, it's not bad for your sleep. Um, Unrise light on cortisol, DHEA levels, or on a reverse T3. Uh, morning, sunrise. So morning, you want to raise your cortisol level up, and then you want to uh, take a break and bring up your DHEA levels from your DHEAS, which is your storage bank for your DHEA. And uh, then you want to bring back up your cortisol after you take a break, like 50. This is how I kind of look at it. So, uh, but I'm not going to, that's a whole nother topic. So, um, awesome. Um, okay, guys, uh, let me go back and look at this one question Rajarsi had. Maybe I'm too. Okay, maybe I'm too invested in the process of being confident and better. And be- because of that, more and more women and success are not showing up in my life. Well, it sounds like you're trying to be perfect. There's a difference between working on becoming better at something and growing and trying to get it perfect or you're not good enough. Those are two different concepts in the mind. One is I suck unless I'm perfect, unless I do it great. And the other is uh, I'm growing and just getting better every day. And the other one doesn't have much, uh, it's just, it's just you explore growth. And if you fall down, that's a learning process from the one you have to be perfect. You're not good enough until you get to this ultimate goal you set. Otherwise you suck all along the way. The attempt to get better causes you to feel pain. So change your thinking on that. You're just growing and let go of the need to be perfect for Jarshi. That will cause a lot of pain. 
Um, okay. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to answer that big thing you wrote down there, that paragraph. I don't, um, you could, if you got more questions, you can put that one in next week. Okay. But I, I did want to get to part of your question though. That was awesome. Um, you guys are awesome. Loved, uh, speaking with you guys. It was a really good night. We went a little over It's uh, 18 after the hour. Make sure to, if you're going to sign up for the, um, the, uh, the, <laughs> the attraction and gathering, uh, um, the attraction and seduction gathering where we learn more about flow state and in uh, dating and seduction and sex, then let's get signed up right away. Don't waste time. Don't miss out. Guys always wait till the last minute. They miss out. Don't miss out. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. And this hotel is damn sexy. The women are damn sexy. It's we're heading into spring, getting closer to spring. Plus Miami's warm. There's the beach. There's, you can get out, get past COVID. There's nothing but good, good reasons to go if, if you can get out there. And if you can't get out there, there's always the, um, the online. Check out the online. Uh, how many of you guys are going? Com yeah, the confidant is awesome, isn't it, Cody? Uh, how many of you guys are going out there? Just uh, let me know. P put it in there if you're going. Online or, or in person, I don't care. How many of you are attending? And uh, just in... Boom, online, online, good, live, Gerald. Yeah, nice. See, a lot of, lot of people here are going to be there. And um, we're only limiting to the live audience to 50 because of COVID. So we got to keep everybody a little bit separate and, get, and have a room with a lot of space. Normally, we would have a bigger room, but um, but still, because we can't have you right next to each other. But yeah, then you get to spread out and take up space and get to relax. So Good job, guys. Um, why are you waiting for the recordings, Xavier? Just do the online part. Um, anyways, uh, I can't wait to meet any of you I haven't met at the event. I can't wait to teach you guys. Can't wait to uh, see you. I always love these 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 big events are the ones I love the most. I think just sitting down with you guys and and shooting the shit and having food at the end of the day and hitting the restaurant and buying and relaxing in the hotel and going out to the beach. It's just, it's a good time for all. It's a great bonding experience. So I look forward to seeing you all there. I look forward to talking to you guys online. I look forward to this, to having this be one of our best live events ever. And we've had a lot of great live events. And with that said, remember only the confident really live. We'll uh, see you uh, in the next video. Take care or live event or live call webinar, whatever.